I, I, you know, um, so back in the olden days, uh, Zoom, when you started a meeting and you started recording, it just started recording. But now it has this recording in progress message that it's in your ear as soon as you hit the button. And it just, le- I just, I don't know how to respond to that. It's just so, so off-putting that I don't. Welcome to Binary Jazz. This is a podcast and we are recording. Uh, and uh, this it's like is, it, it's a podcast, a video cast. It's a many things cast, I guess. It's a podcast. Um, podcasts. Oh, there's a podcast. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a, a show where uh, we don't know what's going on, basically. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the gist. Um, typically, there is a topic that is brought to uh, the show, which some of us don't know anything about, probably. And we try to figure out what it is by, by just the words coming out of our faces. And uh, I'm Chris. Chris. Jazz sequence on the internet. I'm joined by Gary, who's binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. And uh, yeah, welcome t- to being here. Welcome to being here. <laughs> I don't know. Where um, your, where do you either of you remember the movie The Cat from Outer Space? I missed that no. one. It sounds right yeah. up my alley, though. At least the title does. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's, yeah, it is an, a Venn diagram overlap of your interests. Um, how about? What was the it's like flight flight navigator or flight of the navigator? Flight of the navigator. Thank you. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, watch that one. Uh, uh, within the last month for sure. Oh wow. Okay. They I'm the navigator. The, they were on the same VHS tape for me, which is why they're linked in my memory. Uh, wow. No, Are they similar? No to both. <laughs> they weren't. I mean, they were taped. Like we taped them off of the TV yeah. onto a VHS. So, mysterious the first from the Disney, like, would they, mysterious they visitor the with channel? unknown powers on our planet for supplies a six-pack of tuna question mark <laughs> oh you gotta go no you don't gotta go okay yeah we gotta i don't go. know but they're going in the show notes <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna hang out with my friends and then we're gonna eat pizza for lunch right yeah that sounds like a plan it's a good choice Ty and Katie are uh, at some event today with Rhonda. So Charlotte and I get to chill, which I'm stoked about. We haven't had a lot of chill time like for a full day in a while. So this is my uh, my one standing meeting today that I didn't cancel. Thank you. It's not really a meeting, hang out with friends. Well, I'm heading off to, uh, to Cedar City, Utah for the Shakespeare Festival uh, after this. Oh, fun. Yeah. Fun. So. I'm prepping for Canadian Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, I had in my head Canadian Thanksgiving must be coming soon. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's upon us. <laughs> um, and I meant to ask about it or Google it or something, and that's exciting. It's exciting. Good food. Yeah. We haven't quite figured it all out, but we will. Ooh, yeah. I heard the oot. Oot. You you, you're, become, oot? You're, be, <laughs> you're becoming truly Canadian. <laughs> Can I tell you all about my last cooking adventure? Sure. Okay. I made French onion soup, oh. uh, which started with me slicing three pounds of onions, right? Right. That's a as lot of onions, it turns out. Yeah, as you do. Uh, and so also, um, I'm like, dang, like, you know, an onion and a half in, I'm like, I can't see. I'm going to cut a finger off. So I had to stop and take a break. I'm like, well, I'll turn on the exhaust vent over the range so i did but that i think just spread the onion smell throughout the house it did not yeah. evacuate the onion smell so at some point uh ron and katie are like we got to go outside like our heads hurt it smells so much like onion and i'm sitting like I'm, I'm i'm into it now i'm halfway through and i'm like i've got to finish this um but i may never try this recipe again because the house is like uninhabitable at the moment right <laughs> so i get it in i get the onions in the crock pot with just a little bit of uh, oil butter salt pepper and they're just gonna like reduce overnight so 12 hours oh man and uh well so i put in the crock pot with the lid on through a uh through a cloth over it she is in the box yes see 
Well, let me fin let me finish this, okay? And then I'll do that, all right? <laughs> um, so like, so I, I, I stir and I, I put like, I put a cloth over it to like really maybe hopefully reduce this. I mean, it wasn't doing much of anything. Uh, and so, far, you know, we're sitting there and like, wow, it smells like onions was a conversation from like 8 p.m. till bedtime. And then the next morning I wake up at 6 a.m. and I'm like, what does that smell? Like, oh yeah, the onions. And I go in and they're about where I wanted them. I, I learned that I needed to wake up in the middle of the night and stir if I'm going to do this again. Although it's unlikely anybody will allow me to. Um, uh, <laughs> but so, so then we went after the rest of it. Um, and, uh, you know, some more seasoning, some beef, beef broth, blah, blah, blah. And um, uh, let that sit for another eight hours. And then some nice uh, toasted baguette and like shredded gruyere and whatever. But um, but three pounds of onions, I think it, it was probably like the number Critical where I should have been like, this is not a recipe for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit too much, big. But, and I guess you have to hand chop them rather than like a food processor because a food processor would take it too far. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't considered that, but I think so. Um, I mean, I guess I could use like a mandolin, but I don't know that that would cause any less. Since you have mandolin the instruments in in your household i immediately imagined you getting out a, an actual mandolin and like, <laughs> like you think it was an onion <laughs> <laughs> scraping an onion over it i'm thinking how that better have new exactly. strings on that thing <laughs> <laughs> anyway that was my food adventure it, it sounds it, it sounds like adventure you have like a metal pastry cutter you could do like something like that if it was sharp enough mm-hmm Sure. Okay. We're getting a snack. Carry on. I'll be listening. <laughs> oh, Actually, I'm on my Bluetooth headphones, so I can, you can walk with me. <laughs> and and then Gary just uh, disappears and becomes invisible. Um, that's an audio podcast, right? It is an I audio do podcast. Have a topic today. Excellent. What, let's 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 dive into it. What is our topic? The topic okay. today is capgrass delusion whoa cap grass mm -hmm. like a cap that i put on my head yeah c-a-p-g-r-a-s or maybe it's cup gra cap -gra. and then illusion delusion delusion well as we know a delusion is a like a lot of water falling <laughs> <laughs> boy Water falling. Without Gary in frame, it almost looks like his house is in black and white. Is that just me? It does kind of look like his house is in black and white. <laughs> like a faded. Yeah. Yeah. Or the director of photography really wanted to like uh, emphasize like the sort of stark, Spook it up a bit. stark mundanity of uh, being Gary. Sub suburban life. Of being Gary. <laughs> I'm back. It's sort of it's it's sort of like if, if Batman if if uh, Bruce Wayne wasn't super rich, then I think he would live in a house that was of the same muted tones. That's true. Possibly with fewer uh, photographs on the wall, though. <laughs> and and I honestly like I imagine Bruce Wayne doesn't have much in the in the realm of decoration anyway everything is like strictly yeah, well batman's yeah house. batman's not gonna have a tchotchke yeah situation. yeah <laughs> no no there's gonna be like if there's a fireplace the fireplace is there if there's the mantle there and there's nothing on nothing, it. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> maybe maybe it's got one of those like uh glass uh vases with like a single dried out like black rose you know <laughs> like you know that you have that like the goth when you go to the goth store you know yeah. for all your goth accoutrement uh you 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 get the you know the black roses yeah the bouquet of black roses well i guess gary's not batman <laughs> yeah that's true it's too much there's too much stuff gary you're you're there's a little the bottom of identity. i don't know if this is normal or not in the fireplace there's like a little like door that you open that you would scrape like the ashes into that you couldn't reasonably sweep up sure i don't know if that's normal or not um but Charlotte is so worried that the cat is going to fall into it. And it's like, it's that big. It's not. She's like, she's going to fall into it if she steps on it. I'm like, no, probably not. I mean, 
outside of my office door, I have a, I have an air intake vent. Uh, yeah. And it is literally like, I don't know, a foot and a half square or something, maybe, maybe two feet square. I mean, it's, it's basically it's bigger than that. It's, it's basically, intake. yeah, it's basically the, the width of the hallway that it's in with like a couple inches on either side uh, yeah. um, to spare. So like, if I took the lid off of that, which obviously I don't do, but if, I mean, I could, I could put all of my cats into the vent <laughs> system <laughs> very easily. <laughs> now, let me tell you this about vents. Home vents are not like what we see in movies. <laughs> right you can't they're not going to support like somebody's body weight or likely a cat's body weight like they're yeah, made yeah, to they're like support like, <laughs> like their own weight and duct air yeah through ever yeah through wherever so <laughs> as exciting as it sounds to like grab the Girl camera the and event. shimmy in there like please don't i don't want you to get hurt yeah no i, I wasn't i wasn't Mostly planning on it i wasn't okay. planning on it we're See, gonna, cats, you were go gonna pro. shoot mission impossible cats <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've been under the, I've she been keep it down. In, in the basement. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the basement and I've seen what's holding these things up and it's not, it's not very much. It's like a tiny little piece of metal. How much time do you spend in your basement? Uh, as little as possible. Really? Yeah. That's, that's the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why? I mean, I like, I. Because you don't I have a basement. Ours. You've never, had, oh, okay. Oh, we know we have a basement. No, in Florida, basement was like, it was yeah. ridiculous to me that you could that that could be a thing that existed. Now that we have a basement, I'm like, oh, perhaps I'll go down there and fix something. Hell's broken. Like I don't know. We, you know, we but don't have like, my tool chest down there. We have a huge table I can do work on when I'm fixing things. So the our kids old... have a spot where they can like Tyler. No, Katie built this like marble maze. She took like pipes and stuff and took like a trellis and she attached it on there with zip ties and used my drill and screwed nail or screwed nails. Nope. Screwed screws in. <laughs> there goes all my authority on manufacturing things. Um, yeah. <laughs> screwed nails in and, and you put it like a marble. It goes tink, 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 tink. And there's like a little like old plastic butter tub at the bottom that catches the marbles. Our Sometimes. old, our old house had a, had a fairly sizable basement. This one is like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like 10 feet square. And then it's got like a shelf and then it's like a crawl space under the front part of the house. And then in the back part of the house, there's the stairs that go up and then there's just another crawl space that kind of goes around underneath everything else. So it's like two foot clearance. So it's good for storage, but it's not good for much else. Our basement is like the entire footprint of the house minus, I don't know, like this section I'm sitting in. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. No, it's, this one is, is pretty much good. And it doesn't have any, like we, we even wanted to like maybe put a, a freezer down there, but there's no, we, there's no electrical outlets. So we would need to like ha put in an e electrical outlet to do. Oh, no. See, that's something I can anything. do. I can take my drill and drill a nail right through the floor and drop. <laughs> that, that is, I, you know, if you're going to be there a while, I'll stop by and put an outlet in for you. <laughs> I can safely do that. Honestly. No, he's going to be moving to Canada within the next. Period of time. Period of time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it probably won't get you much extra in sales because yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. Although in parts, it's probably going to cost you less than forty bucks, so it's a wash. But what about in travel? <laughs> yeah, you're know, paying for your travel. Oh no, I, I mean, if I'm going to come out there, I'm just going to come out there and hang out. <laughs> the like about would be just like the bonus, like, hey, thanks for letting me hang out. Uh, that's what I should do. Hey, can I come visit your house and do some like home improvement work for you? I mean, you could. We don't really have room for guests. We don't have a guest room or anything, but you, you could totally Apparently come I and hang out. Apparently, I can stay in the basement. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you want to stay in the basement, you're welcome to. You're going to need probably to you don't want to come power out so you can charge your phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the first task is like you get here, you need to put a power outlet in because otherwise you're not going to be able to charge your stuff. Arrive early. <laughs> <laughs> Arrive early and with a fully charged phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely uh cap Graw delusion um it is uh i'm assuming it's cap because it looks well, let's we'll go with it it, it looks it's just frenchy. one s yeah it's one s yeah it looks frenchy um cap Graw delusion uh is when you think that you are the king no it's when it you is, think you're the king it is when you have a plate and like you put more food on your plate based on the size of plate. So plate size, like oh. the delusion is like, oh, that's a, that's a small portion because the plate is so big. When in reality, yeah. it's the same portion you had on a smaller plate that was sufficient the last time you ate this meal. Yeah. So so you you put more on your on your plate because your yep. plate can fit more. That's the cap yeah. gra, cap gra delusion. Yep. 
thinking you are only a- going that way because it's French and <laughs> French food. Well, I have double checked. I have double checked the pronunciation, French. and you are indeed correct. It is French in origin, so it's Cap Gras. Um, we we won that one. We yeah. always we always try to find the origin. We always try to break it down. Yeah. I, I, no, that's you. There's no we in this. That's okay, you. I, I take won. the win, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's not being cocky. If you like, it's true. It was me, Chris. I'm not Chris. That's what Chris should be saying. <laughs> I did it. I selected the origin correctly. Uh, and obviously, oh, we yeah. know that that Cap Gras in in France is the top of the thing, which is why it means you're the king. No, it means plate size. <laughs> If if it means plate size, uh, what is what is the cap? What is cap gras? I mean, I, oh. I guess the cap gras would mean just the plate size. Like that has a very nice cap gras. That plate has a nice cap gras. Well, no, you would select tableware with the appropriate cap gras for the occasion. Oh, okay, right, right, right. So it's it's like a <laughs> it's a thing. You, you refer to the cap gras scale. <laughs> Yeah, and there's probably like a how many courses are we serving? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we need we need uh, like and what the first portion course... of family style? Yes. Okay. So we need a seven point eight to one cap bra <laughs> ratio. Yeah. <laughs> the, first, the first the first course needs to be in cap bra three, followed by you know the the second course which is cap bra five, oh, and then the main course is cap bra like, seven. The plates just gradually got bigger until the dessert course, which was like. A tiny chocolate on like a one. massive platter. <clears throat> Set it down. You're like delicately pick up this tiny little thing. <laughs> well, I've entertained myself. I don't know what you all are doing. <laughs> oh, sorry. Charlotte told me to calm down. So <laughs> calm down, Dad. I like the I like the the, the... she's not wrong. <laughs> she's not wrong. I like the peanut gallery in, in the background. <laughs> she's the audience member we've always wanted. It's true with <laughs> live like, feedback. Calm down, Gary. <laughs> yeah, calm down. <laughs> and there is the cat gra. Oh jeez. Don't step on the keyboard. <laughs> she's gonna sign you off. <laughs> I mean, which we've learned is is a fatal fatal mistake. Don't ever it would be sign okay out. if she did, because she's cute. <laughs> this cat, I have a very different relationship with than our last cat, and not to compare, but uh, it like in the morning when I get up, she chases me down the hallway, meeping at me, mm-hmm. and uh, I enjoy that. Her name is Georgia, and her name is Georgia. Charlotte wanted to make sure you knew that. <laughs> yeah all cats are different all c- cats are wonderful <laughs> yeah at the start of a children's book <laughs> yes it's the children's book that i will not write <laughs> it, it reminds me of do you remember when strong bad wrote a children's book on home uh, oh i don't remember that one i don't know wait no two people are not on fire <laughs> <laughs> it's it's worth a youtube look if you're uh so inclined today it's ridiculous as you know most of homestar runners emails were uh, what's spicy oh i should have that in the show notes because you can actually uh okay you can yeah, actually you can do that. watch most of the homestar runner uh animations on uh youtube now well, um, Labor Day wasn't too long ago. And um, of course, we'd watch the Labor Day video. I'm Star Runner. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that that is still a thing that exists because that... It's, it's really not. It's just the old I mean, archive it, stuff. There's nothing. Yeah, I know. But like, a decade. Well, yes and no. I mean, it, it's, just, it's just the archive stuff, but like the the guys behind it i think it's all guys behind it um uh are still you know i don't know that they're they're actively making new content but they like you know have made board games and they do like true. There, we there are is, there's an active there's an active uh strong bad twitter account 
Um, and I think they do new new stuff every once in a while. Um, it's just it's just a different different format. It's just still in Flash, so no one can see it. No, it's not in Flash anymore. In fact, the website isn't in Flash because I can see it. Can I tell you of a silly thing I did this week? Always. Okay. <laughs> we're um. I am on in, the website. <laughs> we're in Concord, North Carolina, which is the home of NASCAR, which I believe I've mentioned before. This Sunday is the big race in town or one of the two big races that happens each year. I'm not actually sure if it's the big race or not, whatever. There's a race in town and that's always a big deal. Um, as a result, um, like before a race, like you have all these drivers in town and it's like home for a lot of them. And uh, so somebody did a charity kickball tournament this past Wednesday. So it was like all these drivers uh, played kickball um, and they sold tickets and the money went to charity and blah 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 and uh, and then there was like an autograph signing afterwards so um tyler was like you know want to stick around for the autograph signing like yeah we can do that um and uh and it was absolutely hysterical like wednesday night i'm standing there thinking to myself i just watch like nascar drivers play kickball and now i'm standing in line for autographs uh <laughs> and i had one of those like you know like people tell you like you just parenting you never know what you're going to get into and that was one of the moments where i was like yep here we are <laughs> yep and one of the drivers was very clearly um not driving in the evening but very clearly had uh, had had several beers before playing kickball and was uh and was drunk while signing autographs uh <laughs> one of the other drivers like uh was the one that won on monday it was just hanging out chilling fist bumping people like just a very weird eclectic collection of people some of whom i even recognize by name <laughs> oh and one and then the best part was part of the celebrity tournament was like some nascar reporter that is apparently beloved and like the guy in his like 50s were in like the most like 50s 50 year old dad like kickball like <laughs> white socks up to hit like just below the knees like you know it was it was fantastic like i loved every minute of it because the people watching was worth whatever we paid for the tickets which wasn't much but i would have paid double be even ten dollars I, I have no idea what we paid for tickets it was cheap for the whole family uh and a great outing i think on a wednesday night and now sunday i'm gonna do some more people watching sorry I'm, I'm i'm entertaining myself on the trogdor strong bed sound uh soundboard <laughs> yeah that's a good one to bring in meetings oh uh well while you're doing that here's another fun thing i uh i've been doing this um like a bit of freelance work uh mm -hmm. an agency and uh i'm on like three projects but like two projects my role is to be like um a sounding board and like available for pair programming and code review which is fine like you know i don't need like i'm just doing it because i need a little bit of extra cash i don't need like a lot of extra cash yes you're you are welcome to go turn that on you know how to do that um the project that i'm actually doing like code on uh there, I got like a message like, oh, we're transferring it to another team. Okay, cool. Am I going with it? No. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm fired. I don't know. I guess I'll find out soon. It doesn't seem like it's important to figure that out for anybody, you know? So I don't know. Anyway, always a party. <laughs> always a party. Updated every some. Sorry, I'm still looking at this Homestar Runner website. Chris is I'm excited. amazed. I'm amazed that so, it's still a thing and it looks like it did. Well, do we want? Do we? Should are we at the point where we should just jump into the definition? I mean, we can early. Um, sure. But I'm convinced it has to do with plate size to food ratio. So. Uh, yeah, we've definitely solved that. It is uh, absolutely thinking that you're the king. <laughs> it's. Um, yeah, I was right about the one thing. I'm obviously right about the other thing. It's imposter syndrome basically only like of the truest form which is when you have the delusion that a close friend or family member or, or pet has been replaced by an identical imposter whoa wait <laughs> that's a different definition of imposter syndrome. <laughs> yeah. so i'm of the truest form <laughs> That is, that is, <laughs> you are of the belief that everyone else is an imposter. I guess it's not everyone. Not everyone, but someone a close person. to you. And there's a different delusion that's um, when it's a stranger. 
It's a different name. So it has to be someone that oh. is close to you. But wait, wait, wait. But if it's a stranger that's been replaced with someone else, like, does it really matter? They were a stranger anyway. Who cares? Is that? Um, it, well, it usually, the thing is, is that it usually also overlaps with like some paranoia. And because then you're like, why has this person been replaced? It's not just, it's like, like the one example they gave was one of the cases was this um, older woman who basically believed that her husband had been replaced by some other man. And so she refused to, to sleep in the same room with him. She locked her door at night. She wanted to get a gun. Like, wow. Because she was just How, like, who's this guy? Yeah, that must be horrifying. Um, honestly, that must be just like a really terrible feeling. Um, on both sides I mean for her and for him you know well and I think the weird thing is is that as well it's like but she was identifying other family members just fine she was just like oh that's so-and-so that's so-and-so um so it's really just like usually just one person in particular is it that's thanks is it triggered by trauma or something or is that just is it just a thing that like randomly has to be triggered by something right yeah it's usually it usually occurs in people who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia um but mm. also can be seen in forms of dementia or brain injury so it's yeah, okay. definitely like a neurogenerative yeah, disease yeah. of some sort um but yeah sometimes it's been diagnosed in people who just are generally fine so mm. yeah. i'm curious what uh what put this particular topic into onto your radar <laughs> Like, where were um, you going? <laughs> what well, I was, dark parts um, of the internet? I was rereading Invasion of the Body Snatchers, mm. mm-hmm. um, as one does. Uh, <laughs> oh, unlimited minutes. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and then I was looking up something else and I came across this reference. Um, but I mean, it's a common, not a common science fiction like the idea of some something being replaced with something else is like i guess something that's come across my radar a lot well i mean i guess the reason why i ask is because um somebody had shared in the inclusion slack channel in my work slack uh yesterday um that we the whole calling people lizard people actually has anti-semitic roots um yeah and 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 the whole conspiracy theory with lizard people is essentially is a similar sort of uh, it, it's probably not the Capgra delusion it's the other one that where you think that it's strangers or people that you don't necessarily know that don't have a close relationship with because the idea is that like there are these people that aren't really people and they're hiding amongst us and they're you know bent on overtaking uh you know the world the government all the major institutions and and that this is uh this is what's wrong with everything and uh you don't know who they are but you, but they seem they seem to overlap with uh uh jewish successful jewish personalities frequently uh because it's really just a uh kind of a, a cover for just generally being anti-semitic mm-hmm. And goes back to like um, just xenophobia in um, in in England and other parts of Europe. People were uh, seeing these these Jewish people who like historically like I'm learning more and more. I don't know what how did I how did I get down this rabbit hole? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the there there the there's a lot of history in. Um, that I didn't know before, probably this year um, or last year, maybe, um, where uh, like when Jewish people uh, in Europe fled their homes, uh, they they couldn't take their stuff. They couldn't take big piles of cash. So what they often did was they took like gems and other sort of small precious things and packed them into it's like secreted them away. And then mm-hmm. when they go somewhere else, like I think the whole tradition of like jewish people being uh money handlers goes along with this idea that they're you know they they kind of were working with all of these valuables and whatever and that they just you know that was just a thing um and so like yeah seeing these people with like basically hordes of cash or diamonds and jewels or whatever uh just maybe uh really threatened uh all the people in the areas that they were uh uh 
refugeeing to, I guess. Um, I was, uh, I'm listening to this podcast uh, on Audible uh, about heists. Um, mm. And uh, there is, um, there, the, there is one heist that they were talking about in Antwerp, uh, which is like the, basically the diamond capital of the world. Uh, and so it was, and it was talking about how um, diamonds for their volume are the most valuable material on the planet. Cause you can, you can have an, an insane amount of wealth in a very small package essentially. Um, so if you are planning a robbery, if you're planning on stealing something, you don't want bags and bags of cash. You would want something that is small and transportable. So diamonds make a really good thing to try to steal. And that's why there's all these, you know, movies and stories about people trying to rob diamonds. I don't know, man. I get that. But I also, like, if I'm going to go to that effort, like, it's going to be flashy. I want the big bags. I want, like, <laughs> to be running down the street with a bag so, torn open and, like, $100 <clears throat> bills fluttering out and me being, you know. So there's a story about that, too. I'll get to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so what it was saying is that, th so there's actually a lot of people who historic, who were, uh, Jewish immigrants, uh, who had like, they had put things in this vault, uh, mm -hmm. which is like the most secure vault in the world or whatever that had, that had been passed down for generations. And they had more like sentimental value because they were like historic artifacts sure. of the family than, you know, really, I mean, they were monetarily valuable too, but they, you know, as things that they had carried with them. Um, there was a story about, uh, the big flashy thing. Um, there was, I think it was in. Sweden. Let me think about passing down my Bitcoin to my children, <laughs> family early. There was there is a a, a heist in Sweden where um, they it was like they robbed the main like security like money. You know you know those like companies that like move money from place to place. Um, you know they have the armored cars and whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think it was like that sort of a company. So they have lots of stuff in in their vault. Um, and so they, they were going to rob it with a helicopter. <laughs> they just have like they, a garage they, they park in at night. They flew in this sure. helicopter. They broke in through like this domed, like bulletproof glass ceiling that like lowered themselves down into the thing. Um, it was like a huge deal. It was like this big crew. Um, and it was, it was all, um, so the reason why it was a thing that was on the, the, the podcast, so they got, they obviously got caught, but, and, and the amazing thing about about like these sorts of burglaries sure, is like they obvious. they full proof to me <laughs> the amazing thing well they, they did put they put like uh essentially like um things that would pop the the police's tires if they got close on the road so they couldn't they couldn't yeah. like you know go after them um but like oh yeah that's the kind of flashy escape i'm talking about right yeah now. <laughs> exactly right um i'm on board for this yes what's what's let me, let me make a note of that actually what I, found, thing. <laughs> what I found does most amazon sell that no well i mean you could you could probably look but then you'll get that, up, put on an fbi watch list on your account. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> you're popping spikes auto completed and i looked it up and <laughs> and they're they're not cheap well, here's here's the thing if you get caught doing one of these these uh heists you're probably yeah. looking at like seven to 10 years. Like they don't get very long sentences, which is like surprising considering like the amount of money that they, that they are trying. So like, if you are looking at something in the scale of like millions and millions and millions of dollars, and you manage to get that money away and squirrel it away for somewhere, even if you get caught, that money's sitting there waiting for you. So like, you know, you sit, you sit in jail for you know, seven, 10 years, and, and then you come out and you have something waiting for you. And that's happened to a lot of people, like a lot of a lot of these people in these stories, like they, like they were caught, they serve their time, they're released, but the, a lot of the money is still unaccounted for. Mm. Um, actually, there were no useful results for that search on Amazon. It was all like bird spikes that you put on like the edge of a building to keep birds from landing there. Like cat spikes you put in your garden to keep cats from digging. Yeah, you probably need to go to like the military surplus, uh, Amazon. <laughs> Milita military surplus .amazon .com. I guess so. It's totally a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had a delivery. Good. Like on a Am like good? on like Blues Clues or something where it's like special delivery and then <laughs> you bring on some new topic. 
here. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my. Oh, I probably shouldn't sing anymore. We'll get a DMCA violation or whatever. Heist with Michael Caine. Um, I have uh, I've actually taken to listening to uh, podcasts in one ear or the other when I walk in the morning because the other morning I was walking and um, on the sidewalk and like suddenly I saw a shadow coming up behind me and it scared the heck out of me and I jumped out of the way and it was just some guy that was walking mm -hmm. well jogging uh, and caught up to me but was not paying attention and was about to plow into me but while it's dark out early in the morning it scared the hell out of me hmm Yes. You need to get yourself some AirPods. <laughs> I, well, I don't want anything. I want like cheap because they, I go out when it's right. I, like I don't, I want something cheap because mm. I'm going to lose it or break it. And yeah. I bought these ones for like $25. They are reasonably functional. I, I've been in, surprised oh, and impressed by the fact that the AirPods have uh, the ability to um, like just pick up ambient sounds so like that sort of stuff doesn't happen so you have them in but it still amplifies like the the yeah, noise or you can turn that off but like yeah i just i leave it on because then it doesn't make me feel like i'm like closed off <laughs> oh that is a heck of a feature actually yeah. when you pitch it that way although i like my solution of just putting one in yeah i mean that's fair um that's that's the that's the you know solution for people that you know don't need to yeah. spend like 200 dollars on a pair of freaking headphones I, uh, I had to take some time off. I had, well, uh, some time. One single morning I took off this week because I was just like, I was so fatigued. I don't know what was going on. I was like worried, well, maybe I'm coming down with something. So it's I definitely could. Of course, naturally, that's what you think, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, well, all right. Um, so like, like I went for a walk Wednesday and, and I just felt terrible all day Wednesday. And so like, then we went to the kickball tournament Wednesday night and I was like, you know, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna muscle through it and tough it out. And then, Thursday morning, my alarm clock went off and I woke up and I'm like, I, I know I cannot go for a walk right now. And so I turned off my alarm clock and got back in bed, which is not a thing I like, ever do. And slept until eight o'clock, like two more hours. It's crazy. Anyway, you must have apparently really I'm fine. That. I, that's, what I, that's what I said. I said, my body was just like, no, you need a break. And okay, it's cool. It's fine. I have changed my route and my pace a little bit. So maybe that was it. And my body was just like, buddy, take a rest day. Mm. Okay. I'll make you take a rest day. It's fine. Whatever. Anyway. And that's Cap Graw Delusion. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I might be Gary or I might not. And I'll see you next time. Is that how we the, close off this episode? Was that was that the was that the um you can't do that on television? Sting. Da, 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 da. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, I, I think I can play that on my guitar, but I'm not doing it today. Bye. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.